Hello. This is Fred, the farmer and the agronomist. And today I'm in a class. I'm also learning. I'm in school. And I saw it wise also to share with you. Maybe you've seen this kind of a behavior in your maize field, in your neighbor's field, or you've not seen it. So this is a class for Lazo. If you've not seen it, this is the best class for you. I want you to learn. I want you to know what causes this. I want you to get the skills so that you can avoid this. This is a killer disease, as you can see. It can wipe even a thousand acres of maize within a very short period of time. But the question is, what is this disease? What causes the disease? How can we avoid this disease? Kevin, the farmer. How are you, Mr. Fred? I'm good, I'm good. Yes. You're, You're doing, doing well? I'm doing well. Yeah. And uh, I'm doing well. You're yeah, doing well? Yes. With this kind yes. of, of farm, yes. you're saying it's, it is well. Yes. But I know I know why you're saying it's well. Yes. It you know, you, know you, are, you, are, you are the teacher, you are the research guy. Yes. And um, without these challenges, you're yes. going to train Yes. Yeah, so, so, so today, I've, I've uh, visited you. Okay to follow up on a few things that you're doing. I'm, I'm so happy for the for the research you're doing, for the chemicals you're researching about, for the diseases uh, and everything for the pest. Yeah. For here in Kenya, the biggest uh, food basket that we look at is maize. Sure. So when you talk of food security, we focus much on maize production. Maize I wanted to know some few things about uh, what you're seeing. I know uh, the viewers who are following this program, who are following my YouTube channel, are also waddling. Why is it? What have you used the acid to to spray your maize? <laughs> or is it is it uh, field irrigation? Yeah. Is it fertilizer? Because sometimes we, this happens when you use excess foliar. Okay, yeah, yeah. the burning and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, the scorching, the scorching. Yeah. So uh, first thing first, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm the only one who knows you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. You tell farmers who you are. Okay. what you do yes. where they can find you okay. yes yes my name uh, is kevin uh -huh. kevin uh, uh -huh. i'm actually uh in research i do this we do conduct efficacy trials uh -huh. i work with a small company in kirinyaga yes. that conduct efficacy trials mm -hmm. that is why most of these uh, chemicals actually pass through us before they're actually certified by pcpb uh -huh. so you as a farmer you help farmers get the best product that can help farmers exactly apart from uh, uh, conducting efficacy mm -hmm. also we do farming yes. for commercial purposes and uh -huh. uh, the small scale farming yes so with regard to this mm -hmm. i can actually say i'm a small scale farmer yeah yes you're a small scale farmer yes and you're a small scale farmer exactly. i'm also one <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking of this field looking at this field how it is yeah uh to start with why is it so? What is what? Why 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 scorching? Why we have uh, stunted growth? Why what is happening here? Basically, uh, this field has been uh, infected by maize streak virus. Maize streak, streak virus. virus. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, you know when a maize streak virus actually infect a crop, yes, it actually uh, leaves it vulnerable to other. Uh, viral diseases okay like you can see some symptoms yes are more than mystic virus you can see the maize lethal necrosis also yes uh, entering uh -huh. so basically this uh, crop stand has mm -hmm. been affected by a variety of viruses uh -huh. but more specifically maize uh, uh, streak virus maize streak virus yes that means maize streak virus uh, there is a way it uh, interferes with the immune system or the defense mechanism of the of the maize or of the crop basically it's actually all diseases huh? it's all diseases yes so once it, it comes once the, the crop becomes weak yes affect uh, the the plant or uh -huh. the crop yes it actually becomes weak and uh -huh. vulnerable to other diseases yes and also pest infestation uh -huh. so basically diseases that is what diseases do even in our bodies huh? uh -huh. you realize we have uh, diseases that are known as opportunistic diseases yes they only come in as mm -hmm. a secondary after the first disease has actually 
affected your body. Uh -huh. Yes, so your body is vulnerable to other diseases. Yes. Yes. So back to Mr. Yeah. yeah. How does it happen? Yeah. Want to add, as, as, as a small scale farmer, or yeah. it's, it's not for the small scale farmer. Uh -huh. or it's, is it for the small? You know, the, there are some diseases um, back in my very youth. People usually say, this is a disease for the rich. <laughs> yeah. so, so long as uh, you, have, <laughs> you have maize yes. and you are producing maize, mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a threat. And uh, more so, mm -hmm. it is the number one yes. most serious viral disease in maize. Number one most serious viral, viral disease. disease in maize. In maize. Yes. Uh, and when it starts, uh, it can work. Like I'm seeing now, um, this is around almost two acres of maize. Yes. And the whole farm is wiped by the maize. Yes, and I can tell you, this uh, crop is around two months. But this one is two months But old. you cannot actually tell if it's two months. Because what a uh, maestric virus does, uh -huh. especially when it is inoculated or it affects the plant, yes. when it is around four to seven, between four to seven leaf stage. Yes. Because in maize, we usually uh, determine the growth stage by the number of leaves. So uh -huh, when uh -huh. it is affected, before it reaches uh, four to seven leaf stage, yes. it causes a serious stunted growth. Uh -huh. That... Uh, the plant cannot actually grow in height. Cannot, it cannot grow beyond that. It cannot grow in height beyond actually uh, the infection, uh, the infected uh, stage. Okay. Yes. So and and but because because I understand comparing with uh, my past experience with the crop, the horticultural crop. Eh? Yeah. Uh, any disease is either caused by the environment. Condition, yes, or the ELISA uh, across organisms that uh, causes uh, any disease. Okay. So, for me, strip virus, what brings the disease or what causes the disease? Basically, this disease is actually an interaction of so many things. Huh? Yes, one, it's a viral disease, as I've mm -hmm. told you. Mm -hmm. So, the causal organism is actually the virus, but it is transmitted by several pests. Mostly, the number one uh, vector is mm -hmm. actually the leaf hoppers. The leaf hoppers. Leaf hoppers. Uh -huh. So we have several species of leaf hoppers yes. that transmit uh, the uh, mate uh, virus, uh, strip yes. virus. Uh? Yes, yes. It has many names. Yes. <laughs> but basically, we, in this part of uh, the country, we know you that maize leaf virus. Maize streak. Maize streak virus. Maize streak virus. Yes, maize mottling virus also is another name for this uh -huh. disease. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So basically, it is an interaction of so many uh, viruses. Yes. But uh, what causes the maize virus disease? This yes. disease is called maize uh, streak virus yes. disease, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which is caused by maize streak virus. Uh, for you to avoid these diseases, eh? yeah. one, you have to keep off any pest or any insect that comes to the farm let us go systematically yes as i've told you uh, it is brought about by interaction of uh, the environment then uh -huh, yes uh -huh, mm -hmm. vector okay and actually the presence of the causing organism which the is causing the organism yes 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 we have about three species of this disease mm -hmm. or uh, uh, the virus that causes this disease mm -hmm. and their distribution is actually determined by the geography and also the range of the host uh, plant. Huh? Okay. Yes, you find that in sub-Sahara, yes. uh, it is actually so prevalent in sub-Sahara uh -huh. as compared to other parts of the world. Uh -huh. And also it's found in many parts of the world, yes. but it's very severe in sub-Sahara okay. because of the temperatures. Yes. Now, why? This is because uh, different geographical uh, locations yes. have different environmental kind of se setting huh? and okay. ecology. Yes. You find that uh, in Sub-Sahara, mm -hmm. the temperatures are very high. Yes, yes. Now, the temperatures mm -hmm. are very important when it comes to multiplication of uh, the vector, which mm -hmm. is actually mm -hmm. the leaf mm -hmm. hoppers. Yes. So, in temperatures uh, between around uh, uh, 18 to 30 degrees, mm -hmm. multiplication is very high. Yes. Or the rate of production of these organisms, they is, produce very highly. Yes, yes. You, you see, this uh, is an organism that uh, only requires 30 days to actually bring um, about another generation. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. when the temperatures are right, yes. they multiply very fast. Yes. So 
because are, they are the vectors. Mm -hmm. This disease is solely transmitted by vectors. Vectors. Yeah. So the vectors are very important in spreading of this disease. What is a farmer supposed to adhere to uh, for them to be able to have a clean maze and to avoid uh, infection of this disease? Okay. Basically, uh, what happens is yes. this. Uh, this disease is a very erratic disease depending on the environmental conditions mm -hmm. that favors the multiplication of the vectors. Yes. So one thing you realize you've visited me several times. Yes, it's very one thing you must understand about this disease is that yes. in uh, it, it is very severe off season. When you plant maize off season or when you fail to plant maize early. You see? L let me cut you short. Uh -huh. Uh, because these are these are new term and a technical term. Yeah. When you speak of off season, what do you mean? Off season, you know, we have several seasons, as you know. We have seasons per year. Per year. Yes, like let's seasons. say, for example, Mount Kenya region. Exactly. Uh -huh. We yeah. have two seasons. Uh, if I take you back to your traditional uh, planting of maize, huh? <laughs> yes. what do you do? You actually wait for maybe a week or two before the rains. You prepare your land. Yes. You wait about two to three weeks. Yes. And then you do your planting. Yes. And then you realize after several weeks, the rain starts and then they go. They grow. Yes. Yes. So basically, when you do it off season, uh -huh. this is where we have a prolonged drought. Yes. Yeah. Which most of the time is usually uh, preferred during harvesting. Yes. You yes, see? Yes. So that prolonged uh, period of uh, drought, yes. you find that the prevalence or the uh, the presence of the pest is yes. so high. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right there. So the population of the pest is so high yes. during very high uh -huh. temperatures. Yes. That is actually uh, uh, characterized in off-season periods. Huh? Mm. These, these are new diseases to, to many farmers. Mm. And uh, it's, it's so many farmers have not experienced this, and some farmers have experienced this, but they don't know whether it's a disease. Farmers or uh, those who are following this um, training may like to know how can they tell this is mischief by us? Okay, it's not this and it's not that. What are the symptoms? In short, what are the symptoms of this mischief by us? The leaves, yes, or the parts of crops, huh? yes, that. Uh, show some severity yeah yes like if you if you if you're very keen yes you realize you see the leaves yeah yes the leaves that are affected by mystic virus yeah? yes you can see yellow streaks uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. so that, fact, that's where the, the name, the name comes, comes from, from huh? is the yellow streak the that yellow are streaks running. that yes. are running yes. parallel to the uh, venation of this uh, uh this crop uh, yes. or this leaf uh? Uh -huh. and then Yes. Basically, they start as yellow, small yellow specks. Small yellow specks. Yes. When you uh, can show me one, do you have one? Like uh, you can actually see. Yes. These. Uh, yes. These are specks. Uh huh. Uh -huh these ones. Yes. The small specks. Uh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. during uh, the first uh, introduction of the organism in the crop. Uh, yes. So the disease infestation or the disease symptoms uh -huh. uh, starts from about seven days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven, one or two weeks yes. after infection. So these then, specks are the the, the, the the pest bites or what is it? Okay, basically these are the initial signs. The initial signs. The initial mm -hmm. signs. Mm -hmm. Because uh -huh. those are not uh, pest bites, huh? Yes. Because once it has actually launched or it has actually suck, huh? yes, they feed on the sap. Uh -huh. So during the feeding, yes, the virus comes from the gut uh -huh. and it's actually infected in the in the in the plant huh? yes. the system. Yes. So basically, the initial stages or the initial symptoms mm -hmm. are actually yellow specks huh? okay or flakes mm -hmm. yes so these yellow specks or flakes yes actually elongate with the time uh -huh. to actually form what you are seeing here now where is that this one here what you are now seeing here uh -huh. which is actually the, the, the strips now so, the strips yeah uh -huh. and then when these you know f uh, when these strips are actually so many yes they cause about the uh, the wilting the and wilting and the, the scorching and things the that are seeing effect uh -huh. Yes. of uh, the leaf that uh -huh. you can actually see. Okay. And then, uh, uh, as I've told you, when infection 
uh, starts very early, yes. between four and seven leaf stage. Yes. It consists about stunted growth. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. And then when he, uh, the infection reaches a stage where the, you can actually they see the, the, the crop tussling, yes. it brings about mottling. Yeah, mottling of the inflorescence. Yeah? Yes. Yes. So the it kind of mottle and the shoot. It it it, it does the growth. Anything that is coming that is coming from. Uh, I think it also affects the uh, the system of uptake of water and stuff. Huh? Yes. So basically, it destroys the growth uh -huh. and also the uptake of water. Uh -huh. That that is what actually brings about a wilting. Okay. of the younger crops you can actually ah. see yeah yeah you can see i can see so many uh, yes. crops here have already wilted they have already wilted ah, ah. so basically it brings about uh formation of streaks yes this is where it even obtained that name uh -huh. and then the mottling of the inflorescent uh -huh. and then also uh, at uh, some advanced stages yes. you find that uh, the maize the maize cob yes does not actually because of improper fertilization and start yes the maize is not full Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. the maize cob does not have enough seeds or it's not packed. Yeah, very well, it's, yeah? it has it, it has a lot of spaces. A lot of species on the cob. Yes, and of very poor quality. Yes. The seeds or the kernels are of very poor quality. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, most common is actually the streaks. The streaks. And then the stunted growth. But when oh, you yes. see them at this level, know that you are done. E there is no reversal. Basically, you are done. Yes. E at, at this stage, mm -hmm because it spreads very fast mm -hmm. from one crop to the other you can actually find one crop even if you tag yes. one crop and then affected by the maestric virus yes and then after very few days not even days about two two days huh? yes it has already affected the next crop okay yeah so the best thing you can do at this stage mm -hmm. is actually to just count your losses and remove <laughs> everything and uh, <laughs> You, you, you've you already lost it. Yes. So, and um, uh, now from symptoms, is logging um, a way of trying to, to, to prevent the spread of the, the disease? Yes, you can do that mm -hmm. very early. Like mm -hmm. when you see about two to three, yes. maybe, like you can actually see another crop stand yes. uh, just above uh, this one, ours here. Yes. You can see there are a few. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, it is being harvested now. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. when it, it has actually infected the crop stand yes. uh, very early, uh -huh, uh -huh. early on, when you see a few, yes. not actually like this population mm -hmm. has been, majority has been affected. Yes. So, if you find a few, yes. you can actually rog uh -huh. and uh, completely discard the, uh, the, the, the remains or the, actually the, the crop that has been affected yes. and then you make sure that you control the vectors because even after removal if you don't control those vectors they will actually carry the virus to to the next to the next crop to the next crop so you do rogging mm -hmm. early yes. when only a few have been affected yes. and then you control the uh, the vectors wow yes wow. with different chemicals you have so many chemicals and 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 um for the leftovers of this maize, yeah. now minus pest, let's say all the, all the pests are dead, yeah. and we are left, we, we use this as mulching uh, for the for the soil. Yeah, can can the the leftovers spread also spread the diseases? Uh, basically, you know, you if there is no pest now, we are using this as mulch as in mulch. another maize plantation. Can they spread? I think it's not proper uh -huh. because. They yeah. act as reservoirs for these uh, viruses. Yes, and now there is a there is something that carries the yes. Now there, there is the be, carrier yes, of the, the virus. Yes, we have a reservoir. Uh -huh. If you have a reservoir, mm -hmm. the disease can easily be carried to another crop. Okay. So even if you use it as mulch, uh -huh. then actually do crop rotation. Okay. Because this disease is actually uh, specific on. Uh, 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 maize uh, family yes so basically if you want to do that if you want to use this as mulch mm -hmm. then you can actually use it but you do crop rotation so if you want to avoid this is actually plant early early planting mm -hmm. eh? that is one thing yes and then the second thing mm -hmm. also you are supposed to control these uh disease spreading organism these uh, vectors yes once you control them mm -hmm. you you will actually kind of salvage not really 100% but you will actually salvage 
uh, your crop. Okay, yeah. And then the other one is actually using tolerant or resistant uh, varieties, yes. which are actually in the market. And I don't want to talk about them <laughs> because I'll be marketing some companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't don't worry about that. Yes. When, um, you know, at the end of it, uh, farmers, you know, these, these are tips. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for when farmers go to buy maize, yeah. they have to make sure, they have to check on the tolerance and the resistant levels of whatever they are buying. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. We may not be able to mention uh, which varieties, yeah. but I think this is a, this is a tip. When you go there, check the tolerance levels, check the resistant levels. Exactly. Of which I I don't know whether there is the resistant one. Yeah. But they are the, we, Yeah, we may have, be having the tolerance one. Yeah. But one that is resistant. Completely resistant. Completely resistant may be a challenge. Exactly. Unless it's a GMO. Yes. And that's why our government is proposing for introduction of GMO. Okay. To, to avoid some of these challenges. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so those are some of the ways. And uh -huh. then basically uh, field hygiene. Uh, field hygiene. To destroy. Talking of field hygiene is the weeding. and You do the weeding. Yes. And then you clear the previous croppings. So we planted <laughs> maize here. Yes. And then after planting maize, yes. we, we only skipped uh, about two months. And yes. then we did another maize. Another camp. maize, yes. You see? Yes. So basically you are supposed to destroy the reservoir. Which is actually the the remaining the remaining of uh, what was there was previously. previously planted. Huh? Yes, and then basically do weeding properly, uh -huh. so that you can actually remove uh, the hideouts of these uh, pests. Mm -hmm. Yes, or these vectors. Okay. Yeah. I want to take you back to the off season. Yeah. When you talk of off season, mm. is uh, and you told us uh, that uh, you're supposed to grow among the the measures is farming. Uh, few having a, your 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 maize planted few days or few weeks before the rain the, 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 the rain starts. Yes. Now for the for the farmer who is doing irrigation. Yeah. Which are the precautions? Because now this is the off season that you talked about. Yes. This is a farmer who is farming against the the, the, the season. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, me telling some farmers some farm few day and telling telling advising farmers. A off season farm, a farmer who is off season yeah. is always on market. Exactly. Because yeah. the competition is minimal. Yeah. And if there is, you're competing with another farmer who has been using irrigation. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you are here to make sure you make profit, not as compared to a farmer who is under rain. For the off season farmer, which precautions? You remember when I told you uh, this disease is erratic? Yes. The meaning of that uh, statement is. This disease can actually occur in one season. You can find that in, in a particular year, mm -hmm. it is actually endemic to endemic levels. Yes. It, in a ribu mimea kabisa. Yes, yes. But the following year, the, the, the cases are, are very minimal. Low. Exactly. Yes. See? So you find that uh, farming is also about risking. So sure. even if you are doing off season, mm -hmm. what you can actually do improve uh you, the tolerance of your of your crops yes how do you do that mm -hmm. ensure that uh proper cultural activities yes and then you feed your crop well uh -huh. you know that when you feed a crop well yes it actually even develop develop resistant to other diseases to, to the other, yes, yes yeah yes. so you do your your cultural practices very well yes ensure that you remove the reservoirs mm -hmm. yeah Use the appropriate chemicals to yes. control these vectors yes. and make sure that your crop is actually clean. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. remove weeds and everything, and then feeding of these uh, crops yes. from very early stage. You feed it well. Yes. Even if uh, the disease will affect the crop later on, yes. it will have developed some sort of resistance, okay. and it can actually produce uh -huh. before it is too late. Yes. As I have told you, this disease is very severe, mm -hmm. especially when the crop is uh, uh have around four to seven leaf okay yes the four to seven leaf stage aha uh -huh. so after that uh -huh. even if it affects the crop yes you can actually salvage a, a few or you can actually get some yields uh -huh. yes there is a point uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from you and this this has been your song you usually sing that to me yes yeah, the, the crop rotation <laughs> crop rotation <laughs> ah exactly i have not mentioned it. thank you for for that yes. Huh? Yes, yes. now you see uh when you talk about food security yeah. in Africa or in Kenya, especially in Kenya, yes. 
we measure it by maize. True. 100% true. Yes. And we need to avoid that. Exactly. We need to rediscover and know that there, there is a, another f crop that can give us food. Rather than we diversify it. Exactly. Yes, that is the word. So basically, uh, mm -hmm. you find that uh, continuous monocropping. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also a cultural practice that you need to avoid. Do some crop rotation. Uh -huh. Plant another crop that is not of the same species, eh? uh -huh. so that you can actually clear the reservoir uh -huh. and also break the disease cycle. Okay. Eh? okay. So that is one of the cultural uh, practices that I'm talking about. Eh? Yeah. I wanted to talk about. So uh -huh. crop rotation, mm -hmm. farm hygiene, mm -hmm. and uh, control of pests and uh, this pest eh? uh -huh. that act as vectors. Yes. Yes. And um, now I'm um, still on irrigation. Yeah. We have um, several types of irrigation among them, uh, the, 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 the basin, the flooding. Yeah. We have the furrows, the, like the one that we're using here. Uh -huh. And then we have the drip irrigation, okay. which is usually the, the, the leaves of this plant are not in contact with, with irrigation. Mode. Yes. But we have this special uh, type of irrigation, which is overhead irrigation using sprinkler. Yeah. Can it be among the the factor that farmers can consider for them to reduce the magnitude of this disease. The spread, yeah? Yes. You know, the disease, what happens? The pest inoculate the disease-causing organism, that is the virus, Yes. on the leaves, on the stems. Yes. Like that, yeah? Yes. And then, this disease can actually spread also from one crop to the other. Yes. By, by even irrigation the water. The irrigation water, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So basically, you avoid some sort of irrigation. When you use like drip irrigation, mm -hmm. irrigation is quite expensive, yes. but it's one of the best kind of irrigation uh -huh. that you can actually use. Huh? Yes. Unlike the overhead irrigation. Yes. And as you know, even in production of tomatoes, in production of other horticultural crops, you yes. find that overhead irrigation is not really recommended. Sure. Because it brings about some conditions that favors the development of uh, uh, mm. fungal mm. diseases and stuff. Yes. So basically, drip irrigation is the best. Is the best. But this is what we have. So sometimes you find that uh, most of us farmers cannot actually afford it. Sure, sure, yeah? sure. So we use farrow irrigation, mm -hmm. but with several precautions. Wow. Uh, and wow. ensuring that the crop is, uh, you, because you cannot outrule it. Yeah. You know, you cannot tell somebody, most of these uh, farmers that you see around here have leased their, their farms. Huh? Yes. And you find that they have leased piece of land like for one year or two years. Yes. So you cannot actually endeavor and uh, invest heavily because drip irrigation requires heavy invest, uh, investment. Huh? Yes. So you cannot invest in a piece of land that you have leased for about two or three years. Sure. You see? Yes. So we have the farrow irrigation. Uh -huh. And then you have talked about basin irrigation. Yes. Most of the time we don't use basin irrigation in uh, uh, in maize. In maize production. We usually use the, the, far, the farrow and irrigation and drip. And I've, I've also seen the, the ovine. The, the ovine irrigation. irrigation. Yes. Yes, yes. It's very common. Huh? Ah. Yeah. So, 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 still on this disease. Uh, now, the, just before we, we we break or we, we part, yeah. The the precaution is, you said it's the variety getting a tolerant variety. You get a tolerant variety. Making sure that, if possible, the the previous cropping was not uh, a crop of maize uh, family. Yes, of uh, yes, from not from. Uh, maize family yes that this include the family include the some grasses because yes. this is the disease of maize mm -hmm. uh, sugarcane it affects uh, sugarcane also okay yeah there are some strains that are of the virus that affect the sugarcane yes. the grasses uh -huh. you see yes the oats barley ray okay. yeah so, so it's not for maize alone not really for maize it's it's killing the whole family it's killing the whole family, it's killing the whole family yes. but now they are found in different species huh? uh -huh. uh, the one that affects sugarcane yeah different mm -hmm. species but actually it's this, almost the same bio. Ah, wow 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 yes i think i got a uh, whole that i wanted to know about the virus yes precautions and also be able to it's also good to because it i know no, not many farmers have seen this mm -hmm. it's also a, a, a precaution uh, farmers that should take those who have not experienced it it's worse as we can see yeah actually and, um, i'll continue engaging you more to learn more from you also 
you to share with farmers and I'm, 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 I'm happy for the information that you are sharing with us yeah and for the farmers that are viewing us for the farmers that have, have joined us if you are new here make sure you subscribe to this channel because this is where you get all the information about farming about um, technology and about any disease or anything that is disturbing you and from kevin and i we are so happy that you followed us to the last bit and you've learned something if you have a question you can leave leave it on the uh, comment section don't forget to share the video with other farmers so that you can continue learning together bye